In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a so-called long press button. This is a button which has a multiple functions, one when you press it and one when you long press it. For this tutorial, you'll need a breadboard, an Arduino Uno or another Arduino, a resistor of at least 10K. This one is 12K and has the bands brown, red, orange and gold. A push button and three jumper wires, male to male. The circuit is pretty straightforward. We start by adding this tactile switch to our breadboard. This switch will connect these two pins when I press the button. So currently this button, this pin and the pin on the other side are connected. When I press this button, the current can go from this red wire through the switch to the green wire. We connect the green wire to pin number 12 on the Arduino. This is for our data. The 3.3 volt goes through the red wire to the bottom of our switch on the left side. It might look like we're finished now with creating our circuit, but we aren't. As I showed you in the previous episode about switches, this value of pin number 12 is currently floating. It's neither a 0 nor a 1, it's kind of in between and we cannot guarantee whether it is a 0 or a 1. We can solve this by adding a pull down resistor. So I've added my resistor from the bottom right side of the switch to this empty space and from the empty space to the ground on the Arduino board. As I told you before, when we press the button, these two pins are connected. But when we're not pressing any buttons, they are vertically connected. So now any current from pin number 12 goes through the switch via the resistor to the ground, which is pulling it to zero. Now let's have a look at the code of our long press button. So one of the usage of a long press is for example to reset a certain value. I can imagine you create a weather station and you want to reset the minimal or maximum amount measured. It's also often used in uh, menus so you can measure the difference between one uh, click and a long press click for two different functions. So the code starts with several variables and I'm going to talk you through these. So the first one is the button pin and we connected our button to button num uh, pin number 12 so that's stored in this variable. Then we store the previous state of the button and in this case it's low, it's unpressed and we store it in this variable. Then we have the minimal button long press duration, which is the amount of milliseconds we have to wait till we say, well, this is a long press. In my example, it's three seconds. You can change this to anything you want. Then we have the button long press millis, and that's the amount of milliseconds the button has been pressed. Button state long press is currently to false and it determines if there is a long press actually occurring. We have an interval button and I put it to 50 milliseconds and that's the time between two readings of the button state. If we don't use this we will basically have some issues reading the button state so 50 milliseconds is pretty fast so you should be okay. The previous button millis is the timestamp of the latest reading we did. I'll explain this to you later. The button press duration is the time the button has been pressed in milliseconds. There's one other variable and that's the current millis. It has not so much to do with our program but we use it to store the current timestamp of our Arduino. And I'll show this in a minute. The setup is pretty straightforward. We set the serial monitor to begin, we set the button pin to input and we print on the serial monitor press a button. If I scroll a little bit down and I skip my main function and go to the loop, you see the loop consists of two lines of code. The first line is setting the current millis to the return value of the millis. 
function. This millis function is from the Arduino and it returns the amount of milliseconds since the Arduino was powered on. And I'm going to create a separate episode about what you can do with millis, but for now it's just the amount of milliseconds since it was powered on. Then we execute the read button state function. So there's a lot of comments in this read button state function to help you explain what each line means. But we have to keep in mind there are several states in our program. For example, the button is not pressed, the button is pressed, the button was pressed but is released, and the button was released and is pressed. Well, these states are all handled inside this function so we can determine a lot. So let's start with the first if statement on top here on line 46. It's an if statement and it checks if the difference in time between the previous reading is larger than the interval button. And if you can remember, the interval button was set to 50 milliseconds over here in line 25. So what we we'll basically do is check if the current milli, so the current timestamp of our Arduino minus the previously measured value is larger than the interval. So that means that 50 milliseconds has been passed by. If so, we're going to read the state of the button and store it in button state. And then there is a big check because we're going to check if the button state is high. So if the button has been pushed and if the previous state is low. So if the button wasn't pressed before and we're going to check if there was not already a measurement running to determine how long the button has been pressed. So if the button state long press is false, so we're going to check if we press the button, if it wasn't pressed before and it's not a long press. If so, we're going to store the button long press millis, sorry, the current millis, so the current timestamp inside the button long press millis. We say the button state previous is high, it was low, but now it's high, and we print that a button is pressed. Now we're going to store in button press duration how long the button has been pressed. So we take our current millis and do this minus the timestamp of the button long press millis, which we set here. So that's basically the time the button has been pressed, because we need to know this in order to determine if we talk about a long press. So here's another if statement. If the button is pressed and if there is no button state long press and the button press duration, so the amount of time we're pressing the button is larger or equal than the minimal time we need to say we are long pressing. So the most important part is this part. We see how long the button has been pressed and we check if it's longer than we say this is the threshold for a long press. Remember, on top, we said here the min button long press duration is 3 seconds, 300 milliseconds. So if this is the case, then we set the button state long press to true and we print on the serial monitor that the button has been long pressed. There will be a time when we release the button. That's what this last part is all about. If the button state is low, so we've released the button, and the previous state was high, so it wasn't already released, because if the previous state was low and the current button state is low, then nothing happened. But this is from the state high, because it was previous, to the current state low. So it was pressed and now we release it. If so, we say the previous state was low, the long press state is false, and the button has been released. But 
we now only measure the long press, but we want also to know if it was like short pressed. So briefly pressed, but not long enough to say it's a long press. For this is the last if statement. We're here checking if there is no measurement running for the long press. And if the press duration is shorter than the minimal button long press duration. You can see here we check if it's smaller than the minimal amount. And here we say, uh, check if it's larger or equal to. Keep this in mind because it should be or this state or this state. So if you add here an equal sign, you're messing up because if it's equal, then it will be both long pressed and short pressed. So if so, we set on the serial monitor button press shortly. And then the last line, our, we store our overwrite our previous button mellies with the current timestamp. I can imagine this is all quite complicated and I can recommend you to just step through the code and read through the comments to see if you can understand all the different states I'm determining in this exercise. Now I'm going to upload it to my Arduino and we can see if it actually works. So I upload it and I open my serial monitor and here it already says press button and it says it twice because it resets. So now I'm going to press shortly and you see I pressed the button, the button was released and the conclusion is that it was pressed shortly. So if I press multiple times, shortly, no problem, it's detected as shortly. Now I'm going to hold the button longer than three seconds. So I press one, two, three, and it says button long pressed, but not released yet because now I'm releasing it and it says button released. So now you've learned how to use a single button for two different functions, short press and long press. If you run into any trouble or have questions, leave it in the comment section and I'll try to help you out.